Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode three of Tea in the Garden. We are here, me, Priscilla, Savannah, and Lauren, and we're going to talk to you guys as founders of multiple companies and now a multi figure, multi faceted business we run together called Ancient Soul Gardens. We're going to be speaking to you guys on neurodivergent productivity hacks from neurodivergent people and things that actually effectively work. So Savannah, do you want to share about a little bit what we're going to cover, the aspects we're going to cover today? Yes, we're going to be going into three main hacks that will literally change your life if you are neurospicy and have a hard time getting things done and keeping your life in order, which if you're like us and you're called to really help people, you got to have your ducks in a row before you can go and extend your hand to others. We're going to look at those three different main hacks and we're going to look at what is the productivity hack why does it work for the neurodivergent brain especially those who struggle with demand avoidance and uh, executive dysfunction Mm. and we're also going to look for each of those three at the spiritual reflection of these practices and Further, we're building on this theory that we talk about a lot at Ancient Soul Gardens, where we believe that neurodivergent people are psychics, are healers, are intuitively gifted people. They have a more holistically connected brain, and Mm. so they have extra superpowers. Everybody has gifting, right? Everybody has... Uh, you could have, be athletically gifted, you can be intellectually gifted. There's many ways you can be gifted. Intuitively is another way that you can be gifted. And uh, we have just so many different points for this theory that, again, we believe neurodivergent people are what people call psychics. They have that gifting and it can be cultivated, trained. You can learn how to use those gifts and wrapping it, bringing it full circle here, learning to use your intuitive, your psychic, your clear gifts, however you want to call it, is the same as learning how to work with your neurodivergent brain. So we're going to be sharing with you yeah. the two sides of that coin for neurodivergent productivity. And I just want to dive right in and give my opinion as a manifester, of course. <laughs> um, right? Like, <laughs> I think... If you are psychic or intuitive or empathic in any way, you're automatically neurodivergent. Mm -hmm. In my eyes, I've never met a neuro um, or a a psychic or an um, empathic or Mm -hmm. intuitive person that was not neurodivergent, Mm -hmm. right? I don't think all neurodivergents are necessarily intuitively gifted, But I do believe that all people who have those gifts are neurodivergent. It's almost like there was a saying in shamanism and it's like all shamans are healers, but not all healers are shamans. Mm -hmm. Like same thing. It's, it fits within and underneath that umbrella of neurodivergency. And I think the neurodivergency thing is just saying that our brains are wired differently, right? Yes. Our brains have to be wired differently to be able to perceive what Mm -hmm. others most can't perceive. Although I think we all have the capacity to perceive at least some of it uh, with practice and training. I feel like we all have access to that, but I think some Mm -hmm. of us are more intuitively gifted and and with those gifts that comes with the automatic, our brain is wired differently so that we can receive these different frequencies, different levels of energy, different vibrations. We're just more sensitive to it than others. Is what right. I think. Like it's, right. it, they make it seem mythical, and and it is right. It's, but at the same time, it's very much just something we don't understand. But it's right there next to us, right there mm-hmm. on top, beside, behind, right. Yeah, and simply, simply from like a, a neurological psychological perspective, which I find so fascinating, and I just want to briefly touch on for people that may you know, connect more to that side of things or want a different way of understanding what we're speaking on here that is more tangible in a sense, right? In personality typing, we all have certain cognitive functions, right? Every brain has the capacity for all cognitive functions. What's interesting, though, is that some of us, there's actually a term called being a jumper. 
And what I find so interesting and not coincidental is that when you're a jumper, meaning you don't follow a normal pattern of the way that your energy goes towards your cognitive functions, you skip around. You go towards functions that other people try to never use, meaning your brain is quite literally more diverse. And I'm like, I had this huge light bulb when I was, I was, you know, studying this the other week, like, hello, there it is again, divergence. It's the same idea. It's literally just another mapping of showing our energy is just being split in other pathways that some neurotypical people may not have as commonly. Again, doesn't mean they don't have the capacity for it, but naturally as neurodivergence, our energy is diversifying itself, which this is the whole bane of our existence and the strength of our existence. We can be so multifaceted and good at so many things, but it can be really hard for us to narrow down. It can be really hard for us to, you know, focus in on certain things. And that's what we're going to talk about, you know, some hacks with you guys today about how can we utilize our divergence in the best way possible and actually work with ourselves and not against it and not fight it and not think it's a horrible thing, but actually use it as a superpower. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. I always say it's a superpower. You just have to learn how to use it. Mm -hmm. Like we just, (laughs) I'm always relating it to like Spider-Man, but remember when Spider-Man, um, Miles Morales, like just got bit and he like accidentally took off spider girl's hair or he was like getting stuck to the walls and stuff like a, a, like that's not normal and people would be like what the heck is wrong with you and that's what happens to us a lot of the time when we don't understand that our neurodivergent is actually a gift and we're capable mm-hmm. of like so many things and so many big things so many impactful things but if we're trying to operate like a neurotypical person it's like taking a fish and trying to get it to climb up a tree right exactly exactly so one of the what which which technique or method do we want to start off with sharing with everybody i want to start with time blocking um this is something that i brought into lauren's life probably three years ago and it (laughs) revolutionized her as a person changed my life like i shit you not so let me give a definition and then I'll, i'll let you share um so time blocking is when instead of trying to assign a specific time or like, you know, become very rigid in the way that you need to get these things done today, creating a lot of demand. And then the neurodivergent brain is like, no, fuck you. Instead of doing that, it's creating three to four blocks in your day where you're focused on doing a specific task, being a specific place, or just in the environment where you might do some things. So for example, today I have a take care of the house. I have a domestic time block today. It's about three hours long where I'm going to do chores. I'm going to cook a nutritious meal. And I don't know what else I'm going to do. But because I give myself that freedom, I'm instead of like scheduling exactly this time, now I got to go here, which takes so much mental energy from the neurodivergent brain for no reason. I just know that when I'm closing out the current time block I'm in, which is my uh, business and work time block, when I, I know uh, by like a certain time I'll have an alarm go off. Because, you know, what is time? I have no idea what linear time is. Uh, I never know what time it is. I have a lot of time blindness. I'll have an alarm go off that means like in 10 minutes we're transitioning blocks. And so I'll wrap up my work and I'll go move more into going around the house, seeing what I need to do. This is time blocking. So Lauren, how are you time blocking your days? Tell me, what did time blocking do for you? (laughs) <laughs> okay, so I want to take you guys back to when <laughs> transport us. We have to go on an adventure, right? Okay, so I was Not just enough. like floating around like a bag in life. Um, I wasn't using <laughs> I wasn't wind. using a calendar. <laughs> I was literally trying to accomplish things by having lists, mm-hmm. right? Like just having lists of things to do. And for me personally, it became incredibly overwhelming Mm -hmm. because this was the first time in my life 
where I had been working for myself fully and also doing contract work for others. So we had just started the portal and I was needing to be responsible for like teaching weekly classes, which meant I needed to be creating and, and making and researching what I was going to be teaching or what I was going to be um, providing for the, the portal. And I also had other classes that I had to teach. And I was also working on my one-on-one -on -one coaching and working with one-on-one -on -one healing clients. Right. So I had a lot going on and I'm a mom of three. So the list thing wasn't working. I wasn't getting things done. I was getting things done at the absolute last minute where I was so stressed and so um, like activated and triggered in my nervous system that I didn't even get to enjoy what I was teaching mm -hmm. and, and some things were being done, but they weren't being done well, or some things were being done halfway, but not fully completed or not at its um, highest potential. And that was really hard on me as well, being an ADHD, highly sensitive, autistic person. Um, and I really needed help. So I hired Savannah because she had created the platform that I was teaching on. And it just really seemed like she had her shit together. And plus she's a Virgo. So I hired That's her. That's the number one qualification here. <laughs> Virgo. Yes. And one of the, the way that we got to, hey, you need time blocking is I had this pattern. We identified this pattern for me of like, I would plan things or I would have a goal and then life would happen and there would be this emotional trigger and I would get into my emotions. And when I was in those emotions, I feel them so deeply that I would sabotage or, or not do the thing on my list. Right. And then that was just a perpetuating cycle of having a goal getting emotionally triggered, mm. not being able to complete that goal, feeling bad about myself, making a new goal, et cetera, et cetera. And I was like, I just can't complete these tasks. And she said, whip out your Google calendar. And I was like, I don't have one. And she's like, <laughs> what? Go, go make one. And so we identified that the way that my energy works as a manifester, everybody's going to be different, um, is that I work in deep, uh, extended period of time. So I need like two to three hours to get into the energy of like focused working and then having that good amount of time in that focused work and then a time period to slowly come out of it. Mm -hmm. Right. So I needed to allow myself time, two to three hours at a time to do my work. And when I scheduled them, I could do whatever I needed to do within that block. So I could do anything on that list. So if the first thing wasn't popping for me or the last thing was really standing out to me or I felt really inspired on something, I could take action on that. And because it was a block, I started to learn regulation and um, practices to uh, calm my nervous system and, and identify and regulate and integrate my emotions so that I could still show up in the time block. And even sometimes I'd show up in the time block and I'd be flustered or, or I would be, you know, still emotionally triggered, but at least I showed up and, mm -hmm. and started moving something that I could. And over time that, that issue became less and less of an issue for me. Um, and I really don't have that issue anymore, accomplishing what I want, regardless of what's going on, you know? Um, so yeah, it literally it's changed amazing. my life. Now I, I live by it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's let's transition really quickly into the next neurodivergent productivity hack, which is learning how to Pavlov yourself. Because I think yes. if someone wanted to start what you're describing right now, the biggest mm -hmm. hurdle that they'd have is how do I get into Getting the time block? How do I right. consistently enter this space I have blocked out in the linear time continuum for myself to do whatever it is uh, I'm, I'm working on. Uh, so, mm -hmm. P, tell us. Ooh, okay. So, I was just speaking to one of our apprentices last week about this topic. So, it's 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 perfect timing because it's it's been on my mind very much so in the last week. And as we were building a time block schedule for her, right, and and we were talking about all this and her resistances to getting into these workspaces, right? The, the executive dysfunction, this kind of stuff, right? 
it all ties together so beautifully. And one thing I will say that is really important for you to figure out and, and feel free to add on to this guys as well. But one thing that pops out to me initially for Pavloving myself, what do we mean by that? Right. Is like, we need to kind of trick ourselves into something in a sense, right? Like create trick the, the condition. You yeah, give, trick give the brain. yourself a little treat. Give so a little treat. Can I describe really quickly what Pavlov yes. is? Yeah, please. Yes. Okay. And so we have, as neurodivergent people, generally a high pattern intelligence. That's what gives us intuitive giftedness. Our brain puts things together. It connects the dots effortlessly mm -hmm. at times, right? That is pattern intelligence. We have a high intelligence for naturally recognizing patterns, connecting the dots. So Pavloving, it's from a psychologist, last name Pavlov, is when you create associations of different mm -hmm. habits or experiences together so that when you have one occurring, the other naturally will occur. So quick example, uh, the way you train a dog almost is mm -hmm. Pavloving. Mm -hmm. I go is. like this, my dogs sit, they get a treat. They know if right. I do this, they're going to, they perform a behavior and then they get a specific reward. So how do you do that in a human? There's so many ways we're going to get into them. Um, but quick, just example is when I sit down here at my desk, which I'm at right now, I have a specific snack. I have a specific essential oil smell. So I have these sensory wow. experiences and I have this this uh physical location and like the sensation of the chair and right when i sit here my brain knows it has been pavlov through these different continual same uh sensory rituals. experiences rich rituals yes that it's time to work and so my brain will automatically go into work mode right right exactly i was i was about to say for me the the biggest power loving technique is sensory, right? And mm -hmm. sensory is a huge thing for most neurodivergence. For each of us, it's very unique. Like some, for each person, there's going to be different things that are a big no and a big yes. But no, you, you're going to know or begin to learn what those are for you, right? And in my initial steps of entrepreneurship, because this is a huge struggle with entrepreneurship, why we're speaking about this is not only for all neurodivergent people to have more success and build a better relationship to themselves and their own energy through their work habits, but also, especially as business owners and entrepreneurs, this becomes so essential, right? Because you are your own manager. That's a really hard thing that people don't talk about. When you transition into entrepreneurship, it is a completely different way of existing because no external pressure is there, no external force is there, and no external consequences there. You have to do all of that for yourself. So it's a it's a lot of rewiring. So on the Pavlov topic, sensory stuff is so essential, as Savannah started to mention. Associating things that you really love and enjoy with the things that you that you need to do or you you want to do, you want to get done. So one thing for me particularly, because I am more on the spectrum of ADHD and I'm very extroverted and I'm a manifesting generator, so, so you know a little bit more about my archetype, for me, people is a huge association with productivity, okay? So me working by myself in my bedroom, I cannot get shit done. COVID was a nightmare for me because I am very extroverted and I, and I like energy around me to for me to be more of a generator and for me to get things done. So what I love to do is when I know I have a lot of work that I that is hard for me, for example, computer work, okay? Working on a laptop, more challenging for me. Those kind of tasks where I'm just like, okay, I got to write this, I got to check this off, I got to do all these little things, harder for me. So I take myself into an environment I love, coffee shops. I'm around people. I love the energy. I get an amazing drink that I love and that is so delicious that that in and of itself is like a carrot for me to go work is getting my favorite little coffee 
and I'm getting really good food that I know I love, the soup that I have at the coffee shop that I love and I get every time I'm there. Now my brain has these tastes and these smells that are connected and the people in the environment that ignites me to go do these things. So what used to feel like so dense and I would be beating myself up, fighting myself, sitting at my desk. Why am I so stupid? Why am I so unproductive? Why can't I get stuff done? Like we have all struggled with this, right? And a lot of times as neurodivergence, I think we can develop quite an abusive relationship with ourselves because of conditioning, right? Of how we should be in the school system and blah, 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 right? Like external authority figures. And this is coming from you, like valedictorian. Yeah. And I still experienced that a hundred percent. And I did it to myself a lot. I had a lot of that internalized into myself, my relationship with myself. So picking an environment, particularly like a physical space that is designated for your work tasks is so important. That is designated for your fitness tasks is so important. That is designated for your relaxation and sleep. This is why it's important not to work from your bed, not to try to work in the same room that you get ready in or go to sleep in or wash your face in, you know, like you need to have a designated space. It sounds simple and small. It works wonders. It works wonders to have a distinct space. Bringing in all your senses is going to help even more. So diffusing an essential oil or lighting a candle or incense. That's something I do a lot too. when I'm working, I like light an incense that I love. I set the stage, right? I have the lighting that I want. I have the beverages that I want with me, uh, the snacks. And then I'm like, okay, I'm good to go. It might've taken me an hour or two of preparation, but now when I sit down and work, I can get you're ready 10 times the amount of stuff done that I would have otherwise. Mm-hmm. And that probably that the person listening to this, like, that's stupid. I don't have time for that. I'm going to get 20 times done more than you, you know, mm-hmm. because it's yeah. the truth. It really works. Yeah. No, it, it's it so really true, works. though. <laughs> it, yeah. it does. So I know. You guys have I, Adam? Yeah. So for me, my two hacks are I keep my shoes on. Yes. My shoes being on tells my brain we're still work mode. <laughs> So like literally, even if I'm, I, you, I work from home, right? So even if I'm not leaving the house, when it's time for me to work, I put my shoes okay. on. Yes, awesome. same. And another thing, I always come to my desk when it's time to work, I work at my desk, but I also play music. Oftentimes it's going to be, it's going to be a certain kind of music. Like since I've, I've trained my brain enough, I can listen to any music now and it'll be fine. But in the beginning, I listen to study music or lo-fi, lo-fi hip-hop chill, right? That's what I love (laughs) listening to. It makes my little ADHD brain so happy to hear all those little notes. And it kind of really does help me move into that, like the brain waves that I need to be in for that deep focus. So I keep my shoes on. Okay. I play the same type of music every single time. And I also have like ritual, a practice that I do before I come to sit down and work. I light incense. I light a candle. You know, I may tidy up the house a little bit. So my Uh, environment is also clear. So my mind can fully focus on what I'm doing. Oh my God. I don't know how, I don't know how I forgot. I'm so glad you brought that in. How I forgot music because I'm such an audiophile and that's so essential to my work. So thank you for bringing that up and cleaning, cleaning. I really relate to, I don't do the shoe thing, but the cleaning thing. Oh my God. Like immediately upon waking up, if there is a mess around me, my brain is like, I can do nothing until I clean. <laughs> so I have to do that and then let that be checked out of my brain. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Like for me in the morning, when I get up, I have to get my kids ready and then I have to get them out the door. So I don't have time to do that. So what has been my routine is coming home, tidying up, lighting the candle, lighting the incense, turning on the music, mm-hmm. sitting down, looking at our checklist and then starting to work. And I have that work block until two. My work mm-hmm. block is until two every day, you know? Um, so my brain, even on the days I take off, sometimes my brain at those times are like, nope, work mode. And I have great ideas and I work anyways. It's incredible to say as a neurodivergent person. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Like, so oh, true. I just work now. <laughs> what it's are you true, but sorry. I was just going to say, I would love for you to touch on 
even the words that we use, because we've talked a lot about, you know, you've talked a lot about this, the, the way that you even write our work. Can you bring up what, how we write about our work and how you write about your tasks even? So you're naturally bringing us through to our third point, our third Ooh. neurodivergent productivity hack. Just to recap, time you're block. You're so good. <laughs> We're time blocking. Okay, hot neurodivergent babes time block. Mm -hmm. We're time blocking. We're pavloving ourselves to get into the time block to fully immerse ourselves in the energy of what we want mm -hmm. to be working on at, at that time. And what we're bringing that third point, what we're bringing in to so funny. I have my list for today right here because <laughs> we're at the beginning of this podcast recording. I poo pooed the list lists a little bit, right? I'm not poo pooing lists, especially as a Virgo. I could never be against my religion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I am poo pooing scheduling when things have to be done because we think they're a priority, which then blocks us from getting anything done at all. And yes. what I'm describing there, which is pertinent mm -hmm. to point number three, is creating demand, which then creates effort in the neurodivergent mind. And that is what blocks us. Something that mm -hmm. feels so effortful, mm -hmm. we can't possibly begin it, right? And that's where we start to have executive dysfunction really kick in. So we have pathological demand avoidance and executive dysfunction, two really fun, very common friends of ADHD, autism, neurodivergency. Mm -hmm. Pathological demand avoidance is when a demand is made on us actively or passively, directly or indirectly, we cannot do it. The brain shuts down. It is a pathological avoidance. You can't help it. And then that triggers executive dysfunction, which is the mechanism by which we can't do it. it it's the brain synapses that need to be connecting can't because of the way that the demand is trying to enter the brain. So we've got to go a different route. So we're switching out, placing all these demands on ourselves to creating a list of desires. Off the top of your head, what do you want to do today? What do you want to get done? And then it becomes a dopamine seeking quest. Yeah, we can do it. For our little mission. And then we can do it. It's so silly. So if you are neurodivergent, you're listening to this, stop placing demands on yourself because you think things need to get done. Stop. If there's so much you need to do around the house, make a time lock that you're going to do that. Pavlov yourself to get into it. And then you might create a short list of what you want to get done, not what you think is the priority, not uh, what you think you need to be doing. That's if, if you hear nothing else from this podcast today, stop doing what you think you need to be and do what you want to and you can. The word, can you touch on the wording? Because you you brought this up and I noticed in one of our apprenticeship th classes a few weeks ago about even the way that you're writing a task with like the verb, you know what I'm saying? Or like the, the force. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. So, for example, I have four categories here. Today I have one food, house, actually I have five, ASG, Ancient Soul Gardens for myself and then some things I want to do with my bay in the evening, some things we're working on. So instead of writing, it's so, uh, these things are so touchy, but they make the world of difference because I'm purposefully not putting a demand on myself. Instead, I am listing what my brain is thinking. And this is my morning. I do a dump every morning. So instead <laughs> of writing. <laughs> Sorry. I do a dump every morning. Oh, yeah. It's true. Quote of, when quote you're regular. Of the, quote of the podcast. <laughs> I do a brain dump every morning. That needs to be, that needs to be a she does, blooper. She does both. A lovely digestive dump and a brain dump every morning. <laughs> I'm healthy, okay? Yeah, she's a healthy, <laughs> she's a healthy bay, okay? So, okay. 
instead of writing put away the dishes, I would literally just write the word dishes. Uh huh. Put away the dishes is something that my mom would text me and would make my nervous system fly off the handle. Right. Dishes is a nice, loving reminder to myself that I would like to organize the plates. It's like it's Ooh. like dishes kind of emoji. Can I say something here too? Like this also is about the way that you think about it. Right. I think we're conditioned that we're always doing stuff for other people. But if you don't do the dishes, you have a dirty environment and you don't feel good. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's almost like also reminding yourself like dishes. Yes. Means dishes need to be done. But why do they need to be done? Because you deserve to mm-hmm. live in a clean and organized environment. You deserve it. So I think also it's a bit of mm-hmm. like rewiring that self-worth yeah. and having this conversation all, with yourself. That's right. why this like, is from desire. It has mm-hmm. to be from desire, not demand. Right. But it's interesting because sometimes when somebody might hear that, they would think, okay, that sounds great, but then I'm not going to get shit done. Not true. Because it's remembering... It's remembering that actually most of the things you need to do, you want to do. You just have to reframe them in in the right context to your brain. Like it's going to feel amazing to have a clean kitchen. Exactly. You that's actually want, you it. want it. So that's, mm-hmm. that's uh, to wrap up productivity tip number three, you have to approach your tasking from a place of demand so that they can become dopamine seeking quests and and i'm sorry from did i say demand they have to be tasks of desire to become dopamine seeking quests that are then accessible to do in your brain they cannot be demands that you place on yourself because then you're just triggering triggering your demand avoidance and executive dysfunction and you get nowhere Mm. and then you give yourself a little treat at the end yes treats a little treat a gold star. Didn't you do a star chart for yourself? She, she literally, she literally gives yes. herself gold. <laughs> yes, I she does. And I give, I, I give myself, myself, I give myself sweet treats because I have such a sweet tooth. That's that's my, that's my, that's my treats to myself. Oh, one last thing I do want to add though on this note because I think it's very helpful tip, and I learned it way, way, way too late. Probably only at the end of last year, I learned this guys. Okay. So years in entrepreneurship, I was still making this mistake in the lists I was making the tasks I had to do for myself. I wasn't making them achievable. Therefore every day, and this is what Lauren started with every day. I wasn't getting them done and I was breaking my trust in my myself constantly. This does so much damage, not only in like our actual productivity, but in even our relationship to ourself. We've lost trust. We've lost trust on our word. We've lost trust on our ability to do the thing at hand that we're saying we need to do or want to do. So again, it sounds so small, but it matters so much. Make your tasks achievable. I mean it, actually achievable. Be realistic. And you'll learn this a little bit through trial and error, of course, right? But when you're say, sitting down and you're writing every day the same task and it always goes unchecked, look at that. Why is that happening? Mm-hmm. Because it's probably not achievable to you in the way that you're thinking, right? It's like if I'm saying I need to record this um, YouTube video and I'm every day it's getting avoided because actually it's going to take me, I need half a day for that and I'm not being realistic with myself. So if I'm going to put it on my list, I need to know I... I need a whole block for that, right? Like be realistic with yourself. It's okay. It does not make you a failure. It will actually make you a lot more successful and you'll create more trust in yourself in the process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Breaking down those tasks is, is so helpful, right? Having that end goal in mind, like, okay, recording your YouTube video, but you could break it down simply in one day, you just make the outline. Right. And then the next day you add to it. And then the third day you just go ahead and set up. Mm -hmm. And then maybe the fourth day you actually record it. And then the fifth day you edit it. Right. Like it doesn't have to be done in all in one day either. And I think we as neurodivergent people oftentimes have that all or nothing mentality, Mm -hmm. which just needs to be looked at. 
100 percent. I want to say I want to use a different because I use the word be realistic. I wanted to use a different word that I think is a bit more softening. Mm. Be honest with yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How are you going to sit down and make a list and lie to yourself every day? Yeah, right. You're creating distrust. Yeah. And your word is losing power. So it's, it's quite a gift you're going to give to yourself to be honest, you know, and to, and to mm -hmm. how good it's going to feel for you to have completed each thing that you wanted to, even if it was half of what you originally thought you should do, you mm -hmm. didn't write it and then leave half of it undone you know it's 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 a whole different kind of feeling mm -hmm. all right I'll, guys i want to leave this with one thing yes talk about productivity right we are very productive neurodivergent people the three of us mm -hmm. um because we know how we use these tricks right we don't we, and, but i will say previously each of us have really struggled in the past with trying to fight against who we are and how we work, right? Now that we have found what works for us and that rhythm and how to work with our energy, with our brain, even if it's you know dumb to explain out loud, like, sorry, I can't do that because of the way it's worded, but that's the truth. Now we're off and we're zooming and a huge thing to think about in productivity, especially when you have such big dreams and goals is that things take time we don't understand that we only half <laughs> accept it right yeah but things they take time good things take time great things take their own time and most people especially neurodivergence because we don't understand what our limits what is linear time greatly greatly overestimate what we can do in one year and greatly, greatly mm -hmm. underestimate what we can do in 10 years, in five years. Things compound. Mm -hmm. It is always worth showing up and making an effort, even just to express the creator within. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Your yeah. efforts themselves are prizes. Yes. And I think this is something, Savannah, that you've said many times. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. So find support, find other people. Like you, that's how people. we, yeah, that's how we have grown in such a high rate of speed is that we have each other. And when we find a tool, we share it. Yes. You know, sometimes it works, sometimes it's, it doesn't, but we at least have another tool and we're always sharing mm -hmm. and it really helps to have that community to just be like, okay, like this is maybe not typical, but it is for a neuro, uh, neurodivergent person. Mm -hmm. it, it takes a lot of the weight off of you trying to figure out like, why am I like this? When really you're just, you know, that's your superpower. And when you gain those tools and support from other people, as well as, you know, the stuff that you learn on your own, it's game changer. Right. Like we, it's such a, it's such a blessing that we get to create conversations like this. Now we get to have the community that we have of entirely neurodivergent people you know and I just want to bring that up because you know when I was learning entrepreneurship and business starting years ago the only people to listen to or to read from were men who were neurotypical and completely not my personality type or archetype in any way and mm -hmm. it was so frustrating because I could glean some of the wisdom from it, but also I was like, I can't do things that way. Mm -hmm. You know, like, well, how, how can I make this happen? I don't see somebody showing the way and what a blessing it is that we now have walked the path and are continuing to walk the path. And we get to hold this space for, for others and share that, you know, while many of these real estate, you know, macho men who are successful Finance. business guys are like, are like don't buy that starbucks every day you could be investing that in stocks like if that starbucks is your treat that makes you work effectively in your time block buy that starbucks 
This, you know what I mean? Like we're here to tell you like buy your fun drink because it's actually going to help you in the long run if it if that's what it is to you. Do you know what I mean? So it's cool. It's cool to get to share these different perspectives as women, as neurospicy beings, and as spiritual beings who are successful entrepreneurs. So we hope that you got a lot from this podcast. Excited to do future episodes and please let us know your feedback. You can find our community and connect deeper with our community at ancientsoulgardens.com. Or at Ancient Soul Gardens on Instagram. Yeah. Soon to be TikTok. And we also have a YouTube. Yes, we, we do. do. And yeah, we're, we're everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> we're following and you. The, the mystery school. We're everywhere. <laughs> we are the lingering presence in your dreams. In <laughs> okay, bye that's, guys. That's what my degree is in. My degree is in <laughs> lingering presence. Yeah. All right. Love you all. Thank you for joining. And we'll see you on the next episode. Bye.